So, so um, I'm going to start by uh, creating a feature. So I'm going to go to database, and I'm going to click my database and say new uh, feature class. And I'm going to type in name of our feature class. So I'm going to do agree. I'm um, running full. Yeah, so I'm going to leave the areas. Uh, select uh, point instead of point feature and do next then this is the fields all right so i'm going to add my fields here the first one is going to be the rainfall and it's going to be an integer type so you just select that uh, so i say short integer now the next field is going to be um the lot latitude or the latitude field so that's going to be um a double so because it's going to be a, uh, a small point so you're going to select a double The fields float well, I'll just go with double. I'll do the same thing for the longitude, so I'll just type in that and also select a double type there. So that's one I'll go next. Uh, I'm okay with this one, so next and finish it. So when I click finish, it's gonna um, you know, bring that up there uh, and uh, it's gonna create that feature. So I'll just let you do that. Right, so um, the next thing that I'm want to do is uh, to now create uh, the features so I'll just go to, to edit and just create the feature and one thing you notice is that you're gonna have to uh, make sure your templates your editing templates it's, it's all good so I'm gonna um, check that I'm gonna go over to um, that setting to, to create fear to feature template there so you can see manage templates and click that so what that does is helps you um, create your features so you need to know what, what tools are going to be available. So I could uh, actually uh, have attribute table so I can have, when I'm editing, right, I can now type in um, the rainfall figure right there on the attribute table. But I could also use the feature template to do that as well. So I'm going to go set my feature template, I'll go to properties and go to attributes. And then I'll tick, make sure that the rainfall is ticked because that's the attribute I want to populate. Uh, right while, while I'm picking my, my point so I'm going to do OK I'm going to click that and, and just to make sure that everything is right and you can see now it is showing up as required so I'm going to just go there just to uh, confirm everything attributes again uh, and make sure that that's done done that's, that's fine so the rainfall is what I'm going to, the other ones I'm going to calculate them, so go all the way back again. So you can see now it's showing up rainfall, so I can actually type it in there while I'm picking my points. So I'm going to show you first how to uh, actually populate the data using the attribute table. Um, then we're going to go over to actually use um, the feature templates to um, do that. So um, the rainfall data, uh, the rainfall for many degree data um, is, the average rainfall is 5 to 4. So I'm going to have... Um, Pros or minus thing, right? So, um, so there's going to be an upper bound and a lower bound. Okay, so I'm going to um to make that calculation. So the upper bound is plus uh, ten, the lower bound is minus ten. So I'm going to do that plus ten. So I'm going to have um, I'm sorry about that. So I'm just going to type it in again. Five two plus um. Uh, Interesting. So we're having a uh, five three four. That's the, the upper bound. Five three four is upper. That's what. That's the highest uh, rainfall data. So I'm just going to type in that minus ten. So that's going to be the my, my lower bound. That's five one four. So that's the lowest value I could have for the rainfall for any particular location. So I'm just going to close that and go back there. I'm going to zoom in uh, to to help me um, know. So you can see this. Uh, the places around where the, the water body is, the river is should have a higher rainfall so I'm, uh, I'm just gonna um, select that you see the position as well so I select that so it creates that, that feature so I'm gonna come here and type in my figure that's the rainfall figure there so since there's a lot of rainfall that since it's close to the water body and you can see the vegetation I'm gonna type in a higher value say 535 uh, for example and uh, say okay Right, and I just pick the next one, and um, I'm gonna type in another figure. So 
So since that, that field is, is an integer type, you can type in the text. Right, so I'm just going to um, go somewhere else. So this doesn't look like it has a uh, lower and full. So I'm going to pick somewhere around. Uh, right, so I want to also uh, show you that you, you can actually now use, I'm going to switch over to using uh, my template. So what you have to do, you need to type in the figure first before you now drop the points, unlike uh, the actual table where you have to drop the points and then edit the actual table. So if you don't do that, it's going to not record it. You can see now it's recording that there because I, I typed in the, the figure first before I pick the point, drop the point for that particular location. So if I were to type in the, uh, to drop the point first for the number, it's going to be null, so it's not going to apply. So I'll just pick uh, another point. Uh, this doesn't look a little dry, so I'm going to uh, just type in, like I said, type in the number. Five, um, say one five, and I'll uh, drop that there. So uh, you can see that. But I'm just gonna go close that. And once you're done, uh, you're gonna pick a lot of points so so that it actually covers the story area, so that you can have a good uh, data. So once when that's done, you're gonna see all these points. I'm gonna open the actual table for this one now, so you can see those um are the figures for, for that you can see the lowest one you can like sort it um by the highest number so the other ones are a norm so you can see that all right so um what i'm going to do next is to um so i have my points is to calculate my latitude and longitude field uh, so that i can have uh, that exported to excel and use that for my you know next session of the video so i'm just going to right click on that and uh, say calculate geometry it's not calculate field you the geometry because they're coordinate so you just select uh, calculate uh, field so i'm just gonna, gonna save this now so um the property the field is light so i'm going to select points x coordinates because that's latitude and select uh, the format to be de decreased okay let's, ca let's calculate that and then you can now see that uh, that's got decimal it's 13 we're going to do something for the longitude collect geometry um i'm going to select uh, points y coordinates yeah yeah i'm going to also select uh, the coordinate format to be decimal degrees and okay so I'm going to expand this um, to a kick so you can see that the coordinates uh, longitude is there as well. So you can see it's all calculated for all, everything. So you need to make sure your and no selection is done. If, if there's a selection, then it's going to want to calculate for that which was selected. So I'll just go open down. There you go. I'm just going to close this now. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is to uh, run the table to Excel tool. So I can uh, select uh, that to to an Excel uh, table. So you can see the first option, it, second option rather, it's a uh, table to Excel. So I'm just going to drag this and drop there as the input table. Um, I'm going to select my location. Uh, I'm quite fine with that because that's my database. So I'm just going to edit uh, the output name and change that to um since it's not a table it's, it's now in excel so i'll just i'll just call that table a rainfall table and and that's fine i'm gonna use the field alias this, this column that's gonna be the column name so that there's no alias so i'm just gonna just like that so it's gonna use that too i'm gonna click run and once you do that, it's going to create that and um, it's going to give me um, this, you know, once you select that, it's going to create that. So I could always come to my Excel table uh, to just open that uh, and I'm going to see the same figures there uh, like that. So that's, that's it. Let's save that. Hello everyone, I want to demonstrate how to interpolate your rainfall data. 
say you have uh, an Excel file that contains your rainfall data and the latitude and longitude of conditions like this. So this is my rainfall and the latitude and my longitude. So there are two ways. So there are two ways to do this. You could convert the table or the Excel table to a GIS table that Agile Pro can understand and display. From there, you can now generate your points, or you could just import um, the, the table as an XY point data. So I'm going to go over to Pro and show you what I mean. So say I have um, my table, like you saw, what I'm going to do is go to uh, analysis tab tools. And I'm going to search for, remember searching is quite easy to find the tools you're looking for. I'm going to search for Excel table. So it's like this. This is uh, the two parameters it's asking for is the input table and the output table, the sheets and some other one. So I'm going to um, open the location where my Excel table is. In this case, it's right here my folder so that's this i'll select that then it creates an output uh default output for me i'm just going to go ahead and change that because the name is too long um table to excel i'll just call that excel right so if I do that, I'm going to have to select the, the sheet. This way the sheet was. Um, now remember, that's the sheet name there. So I'll select that. And when I run this, if I run this, uh, it's going to generate a standalone table for me, uh, which is going to look something like this. Right. So now if I open that, I can see my rainfall data, my longitude and latitude. Right. So the next thing I would do would be to right click on this table and say display X, Y data. If I click that, it's going to bring up uh, the display X, Y data tool uh, with uh, some parameters, which I have to select. And once I do that, it's going to bring out my point data. Now, the other way to do this is to just go to your map and come to add data. So this time you're going to add your X, Y point data because from Excel you have your longitude and your latitude and then point data so you can just add it directly. So I'm going to just click that and it's going to bring this geoprocessing tool called XY table to point. So I'm going to input my table. Um, I'm just going to um, go and select that table, open it and select the Excel uh, table itself. The sheet way it is. And the same thing, I'm just going to have to um, rename this. I'll just call this um, XY or something. It's simple there. Now, this is really important. You need to know your X uh, is your latitude and your Y is your longitude. It didn't read it correctly because for some reason it, it thinks that the longitude is the X view. So you have to correct that. You have to, have to make sure that they are correct. So I'm going to select my long, longitude. For the, for the X and Y is going to be longitude, but the latitude for X and Y is the longitude. So um, this is the, the current system of my map. So I'm going to leave it at that and I'm just going to click it run. So it runs and you can see my point data really sitting on where they are supposed to. I don't quite like my symbology, so I'm going to change that. I'll just, uh, I'll just come here and change. It's really quite, still big, so I'm just gonna reduce this to about four, right? So, so that's my rainfall data. So the next thing to do is now to carry out your interpolation. Now I'm still going to go, go ahead and just search for IDW, that's the inverse distance weighing, the population method. So now you, you have two options. You have the one for 3D analyst tools, you have the one under um, the geostatistical analyst tool and special analyst. So this is the one you want to use because we're doing special analysis. You want to use the special analyst tool. So I'm going to select this IDW and it 
Now, as usual, in actual parameters, the input point feature, the Z value, which is your elevation, and the upper raster, the self highs, we can always fix that. So, like you just drop down and select start, it recognizes that this is the point data. So, I could select that instead of, you know, another way I could do is to drag from table of content dropping on my space. Now, my Z value is my rainfall. So, I need to select that as well. Now, my output raster default name, I'm just going to go ahead and change that. I could just uh, add that, right? Name of uh, the output and the location. My cell size has to be the same as my DM, right? Because I, I have to, I need my, my cell size to be consistent across all my different layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, select that. I'm just going to wait for it to, for it to load. So um, I open my database where I have uh, that my DM, I'll just select that. All right, and uh, another thing I could do would have been to maybe go to environment and set that using um, this. So it would have been to, to um, come out, right? So I'll just do that on the list. But you have to do it only one time. If you do it here, you don't have to do it here. So maybe it's just better to just come to environments, which you're familiar with, and just do it nonetheless. So everything uh, else is going to be the same. I'm just going to um, confirm that I'm fine with this when for my output raster, my cell size, and this one's optional. The one other thing I'll do is to use my mask to be my my um, area. Max story area i'm just going to select that as my mask so that it clips that so i don't have to run uh, the clip tool again then um yeah that's what i'm going to do oh processing extent um it's going to be um the same as my that all right, so I'm going to select my my so the area I could I could as well select this because uh, I clipped it already. It's the same thing, so I'll just run it. Um, and I th everything everything is perfectly um okay. I'm just going to to run that. And there you go. That's my result. And um, that's how to generate uh, an IDW interpolation using your excel data uh just to recap you bring in the excel table onto pro and then you extract the xy value so that it comes out as a point or you could just add it using the, the add data tool from your rerun so that's how you create the idw population of your rainfall data